Welcome to WO50, Women Over 50 in Body Wisdom and Wellness. Hello, my name is Corinne and I'm here with my BFF, Eddie. And today our topic is deep listening, how to tune in, how to trust and follow your intuition. Oh, it was, it was a great conversation. It was yeah. a great conversation. We, I really listened to you, Corinne. <laughs> you did. <laughs> You did. We yep. And deep listening can be um, to our bodies. We kind of ended up with that. And deep listening to friends, as Eddie just mentioned. Uh, deep listening to ourselves, like our intuition, the flow of our life. Like a lot of different ways we need to listen in life. Yeah. Active, active listening on every level. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Great conversation. Hope you enjoy it. Hola. Hola. <laughs> ¿Cómo estás? Uh, très bien. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just went into French, didn't you I? You did. Mm. You did. Okay. That's what you do. So you have not <laughs> tuned into the wrong channel. This is this is W O five O still, um, but I just was dealing with my gardener who's from Ecuador. So it sometimes yes. the 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 five words in Spanish that I know will come out. Yes, and we're working really hard on our Duolingo program. Oh, you are? <laughs> no, no, because <laughs> I love we Duolingo. Were- I do too, but I haven't yeah. lately. I haven't mm, lately. Yeah, it takes consistently, consistency. consistency. Yes, it does. But I remember we were both, um, because I was going to Spain or Italy somewhere, and I was on the Duolingo. Yeah, it was Spain, and we were throwing words back and forth at each other. So it's really fun. It's mm-hmm. it is fun. It's actually learning a language is really good for the brain. It's it is really good, good for the brain. Mm-hmm. Learning anything mm-hmm. new. Do you yeah, know but that you I... have to listen. You have to listen. <laughs> no, that was a leap, Eddie. I don't know. <laughs> that was like a quantum leap. Nothing. <laughs> you made it sound like it. You were really convincing that that was smoothly going into it. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Let's try again. <laughs> <laughs> you have to listen more. Yes. Might I suggest deep listening? Deep listening. Active listening. <laughs> So our topic today is deep listening, how to tune in, trust, and follow your intuition. I think that is a really great topic to talk about because we talk about all the time, listen to yourself, follow your intuition, go with the flow of your life. But like, how do you do that? So Eddie and I, I think, you know, we can talk about our processes, how how we've learned to trust, mm-hmm. you know, in the ways that we do deep listening. And so hopefully um, it'll be helpful for everybody else too. And, you know, it's funny when, when we decided on this topic, I remember growing up with a family in a family that, um, listening isn't their best attribute. Most so families. trying, <laughs> yes, yes. Right. I big Irish family in Newfoundland. So I was always considered the real quiet one in the family because I couldn't get a word in. And, but when I can get a word in, you know, it's great. But so there was never a practice of listening. It was wait for the someone to inhale and then jump in with what you need to say. Yeah. But now it's interesting. Even today, I had some neighbors, they were walking down the street and her husband kept interrupting. Like she was telling the story and they were both talking to me at the same time. And I have really practiced this and my family have been wonderful for me to be able to practice this and with (laughs) awareness, right? Which is the gift. And I'm listening. And what I decided to do, I couldn't listen to both of them. And he was really wanting to hold the conversation. And I looked at her and she was talking. So I actually engaged with her. I Mm -hmm. locked eyes. I looked in and I was listening to her. Mm -hmm. And what started to happen was his voice started to fade out. So my Mm -hmm. ear wasn't even, you know, being pulled that way. And you know how you're polite and you acknowledge Mm -hmm. and go, oh, yeah, because as soon as you do that, you've just kind of broke that, that engagement, right? That, Mm -hmm. that active listening. And I think when you're really attentive, I don't know, it shows... You, you know, that, that they matter. It's respect. It's, I don't mm-hmm. know. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, so, everybody, everybody wants to be heard. Everybody need, we all need to know we matter when we walk into a room and listening is 
we've talked about it probably before on the podcast. We've we've touched on it just because it's such a it's so important and it's not something I think we do very well in this world. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think, you know, a lot of the people I work with and even myself, like I have to take a conscious effort, like everything I teach is because I've learned it, you know, in my life. And most of the time in a conversation, especially when a conversation isn't as important. So you decided it was an important conversation to you. So you tuned in and you, you'd made a choice listening to her, but you could have e- as easily, or maybe if it was 10 years ago, would have just let them both talk and not really listen to either one. Like there's a lot of choices to do and then just wait and then comment on maybe the last thing you hear one of them say or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time, if, if, if it's a casual conversation, what we tend to, our mind wanders a lot Mm -hmm. and we sort of are waiting, thinking about what we want to say, right. Instead of really deeply listening. And when you really deeply listen, sometimes if you're really deeply listening, you might have five things that you want to say if if they go on for several minutes. But instead of trying to remember what you want to say, just keep with them. Just Mm -hmm. keep, keep with them and keep listening. And then when they stop talking or, you know, there's a break and it's time for you, whatever you need to say will be there. And yeah. it is like a meditation, I'm telling you, because, you know, we've done that on the podcast before. It's like, I'll, I'll have something, you'll spark something that you're saying. And I'm like, oh, I got to remember, say that. But, you know, and I've learned to just kind of let it go because it'll come back if it's that important. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, you, I you've called me out on that a few times, which is good in a good way, because I have been that way. I, I have to have that next thing to say, right? And I really trust that that's going to come back in. Yeah. And and you have said that, that, like, just keep engaging, just keep the focus in the distraction. You know, it's okay, even if it you goof and you forget, right? You, you yeah. what you were going to say, it'll come back in. Yeah. But maybe something even better will come back in. That's right. That's right. We got to be okay with that vulnerability, too. Yeah, right? So just going. Mm, yeah, egg in my face. Oops. Okay. Yeah. I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. So. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's like somebody always feeling like they have to have the answer or, you know, and I've gone through periods like that. And now, Mm -hmm. you know, this is the beautiful thing about getting older is that I, I really don't mind saying, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to check on that for you. I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't have the answer to that right now. Mm -hmm. And it might, it's in there somewhere, Mm -hmm. but it's okay. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing wrong with pauses too. Not a thing. Unless you're doing a podcast. <laughs> it's not a pause cast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was really funny today. Um, I went in and Strat was my partner. You know, he was listening to one of our podcasts. And oh, yeah? it was about the, the, the lady of the lake when we were oh. in the talent contest. Yeah. He was laughing so hard. I walked in and I'm like, what are you laughing at? He said, you too? Both of you? (laughs) That's so cute. I know. I was like, you haven't listened to that? That's been out a while. What's wrong with you? Get with the program. (laughs) Oh, but that's okay. You know me because there's... I'm kidding. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, But I mean, yeah, because I wouldn't expect him to to listen to it at all. No, he's not a woman over 50. Yeah. (laughs) Even though many women under 50 do listen to our po- podcast. but And men too, because they yeah. said, I have some patients who say, you know, I tune into your podcast because he said, you two have a lot of really good information and it gives me some insight. Oh, it's so great. Yeah. I love to hear that. Yeah. I love uh, to hear that. It's beautiful. So it's oh, for anybody oh. really. Mm-hmm. And they're yeah. probably doing deep listening when they're listening to the podcast. You know, there's so many ways we can, we can listen and tune in because, you know, really most of the time we're living in our heads, you know, they, they say there's, you know, 65 to 85,000 thoughts in a day that each one of us has. That's like, that's a lot of thoughts. That's like, and then if, if somebody has ADHD, then Mm -hmm. they have more than that. Oh yeah. Yeah. The mind, the mind, the thought is always going. The mind is always going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you, you you can't control 
the thoughts in your head. That's not, you know, you what if you've ever meditated before, you that's the first thing you realize. There's no controlling that goes on. You're what you're doing is you're noticing because most of the time we walk around in life not realizing that there's like this constant narrative going on in our heads. We don't realize it's there in, until we go to sleep at night and try if we can't sleep or if we do have a meditation practice, we notice the, the all the thoughts. Um, you know, or if med you know, we're doing yoga and then at the, the it'll all of a sudden be quiet inside and we're like, oh, that's, that's, you know, different. And that's why people like nature walking in nature because they're interested, they're breathing, they're looking yeah. at the birds and their mind is slowing down because that's sort of, you kind of have to be tricky that way with it. You have to be the antidote for the noise going on in your head is the awareness of right here, right now. So, mm -hmm. and it can happen even though you're really present and really listening, there's still thoughts going on at the same time, but just like you did, you tuned into her and he started to fade out. That's mm -hmm. exactly what the same thing that happens in our head. There's many different Corinne's inside my head. There's many different mm -hmm. eddies inside your head, but mm -hmm. there's actually only one choice maker eddy. There's only one CEO that's the choice maker that decides to listen. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any control over the many, many thoughts that we have, but we do have control over if we decide to listen. And you made that decision with mm -hmm. your neighbors to listen mm -hmm. to her. Yes. And then you were able to have a conversation. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's, it's quite the connection, you know? Yeah. It's quite a connection. And there's an energy with that. And when you said like nature, when people do a nature walk, it's because that's the, con that's a connection for them, right? Mm -hmm. They, they get out in, in it for some, re it, it ground, you know, they get very grounded or they well, hear they're the more birds. interested. They're more interested, yeah. right? So yeah. when you're driving in the car and there's, and there's traffic, you might be listening to the radio or listening to your head, what's going on, like what you're going to do that day and, or debating about an argument you had with somebody. But as soon as mm -hmm. you like get, get out of your car and you pulled up to a park and you're going to take a walk and there's flowers in bloom mm -hmm. and the birds, then you start to notice them more. And you're you just like you did when you were walking with your neighbors, there was all that noise. And then you mm -hmm. just focused in. So we, mm -hmm. we never, ever have any control over the amount of thoughts that is in our head. We just don't, yeah. but what we do have a hundred percent control over of is what we decide to focus on, what we decide to listen to, what then we even decide to believe. That is so true. That is so true. And you just think about that for a second, the thought you think can change your whole day. Yeah. What you decide to believe about, you know, cause you have a lot of different choices at any different moment about what, how mm -hmm. you decide to take some information in when you deeply listen, but when you're deeply listening, there's just more, more intention there, more presence there. And there's, there's many things that we can deeply listen to. We can deeply listen to music. We can deeply listen when we're walking with a friend. We can deeply listen when we're meditating. We can mm -hmm. deeply listen you know, in a business meeting, you know, when maybe we don't want to be at a somewhere, but and our mind wanders, it's like, no, come back because there might be a piece there. Like what Eckhart Tolle says, I love this, is that we unconsciously believe that what we're thinking about is more important than the present moment. Yeah. We unconsciously believe that what what's going on in our head is more important than the present moment. And it's it's not ever true. The, no. the only thing that matters, what, no matter how mundane it is, is the present moment. Yes, because again, you're, you're in that present moment and the thought you're thinking, if you're going into future thinking with it, even what I'm going to say next, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you've gone out of present moment. You've gone into wherever, <laughs> whatever lane that takes you in. Yeah, yeah, the many lanes of the he of the head of the I mean, there's just so the the mind, if we had a megaphone, that was blasting out everything that was going through or the narrative that's going on in the head totally unconsciously all day long, it yeah. would be mortifying. Yeah. You know what people what comes the crazy stuff that comes into each of us. I, yeah. I tell people when I teach them how to meditate, I'm like my my thoughts 
are just as crazy as yours. My mm -hmm. mind can be all over the place. The only difference is, is that I don't believe my thinking. I use my mind. It doesn't use me. Yeah, that's a great statement. That's great. That's one yeah. of the benefits that deep listening and meditation have done for me. Mm -hmm. Or as Adi Ashanti says, the answer's in the silence. <laughs> Every yeah. time I say that, it brings me whoop, yeah. so many things, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. You just even that it statement, could... whether you get it or not, the whole point is that you can't get it really. You just, you have to listen. It's like the yeah, answers are listen. in the silence. The answer, yeah. It's silent. It's silent. Well, it's like even, I remember someone who went to a bamboo retreat and I'm going, and this is years ago. And I'm like, what did you do at the bamboo retreat? And they were like, well, we set up our tents and we slept outside underneath the bamboo and, it, and we heard it grow. We could actually hear the bamboo grow. I'm like, what? What? They're like, oh yeah, you have to, the whole practice for two days or three days or five days, however long it was, but every night they could hear the bamboo make like this sound, like it was stretching. That's now, amazing. That's, amazing. That's intense listening, that's right? That's deep listening. That's deep listening. That's a practice. That's, you know, wow. so... Yeah. So even in meditation, like even if you had that experience to sit in a meditation and have that thought come in of, oh, I was sitting and I heard this bamboo and this is what it sounded like. And this is how I felt when that happened. And, huh, you're in that moment. You're, yeah. you're in that experience again. Well, Tim, what I would say I mean, that's, that's a perfect example, which is so you <laughs> <laughs> is here. I'm like into the listening, the bamboo stretching and Eddie's having a dialogue about the bamboo stretching. <laughs> that's, that in lies the difference of you and I. Yeah. <laughs> that's why she's a meditation yoga teacher, you know, <laughs> speaker guru and I <laughs> speak and talk to people on science and herbs and, and nutrition and mm -hmm. yeah it's like someone said to me how does the food actually get into the cells I'm like well you have to listen to me <laughs> <laughs> I have to say something that will mean something where they will get it right that's active listening oh yeah you 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 do it naturally. And I, and I feel like when, if you can find out how you deeply listen in your life, then you can, you can learn how to do it in other ways. So Eddie, I'm sure naturally you've been doing that as a naturopathic doctor, being one-on-one -on -one with people for so many years, you, when they come in, you have to deeply listen. And, and I, sometimes I say, yes. it's almost like a, a deer poised on the top of a meadow. The deer, his ears are going all over the place but his skin too. It's like he's yeah. listening with his entire being, not mm -hmm. just his ears. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I bet you that's what you do with your patients. You're well, feeling with your whole being. Yeah. And, and I know you do it in, in a, the other way as well. You listen with your whole being. And yes, I, I, I tap into all the senses because when I work with somebody and they're wanting to change something about their habits, their lifestyle, their, the, I call it the process now, right? The process, like even our cell repair is a process. Mm -hmm. And what, when I say something, I feel it in my being where they're feeling it. Like mm -hmm. if they heard it, I see a reaction in their face. If they feel it in that they move in a certain way or there's a crying or there's, oh my God, I get what you just said. You know, mm -hmm. there has to be an exchange, but I also have to be present to hear them. Yeah. Because oh, if somebody yeah. says, don't tell me to make smoothies because I hate smoothies. And then the first thing I tell them to do is blend up a smoothie. Yeah. Then they're not going to. Yeah. That's not very helpful. I'm not mm -hmm. a very good naturopathic doc. <laughs> if you're doing that. Yeah. If I'm yeah. not listening or I don't swallow pills and I have, you know, Mm -hmm. their pill uh, support ready to go supplements. Like I, I go, Oh, they don't swallow it. Well, we got to do everything through food. They don't mm -hmm. want to take supplements. They don't, you know, so there's a different, yeah, you got to listen. Mm -hmm. You have to listen on a, and, and I've been practicing that my whole life because yeah, my we, conditioning it, mm -hmm. right at the beginning, like we talked earlier was, was 
just to try to get your words in when you could. And now it's like, mm, well, that's not so important anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yet yeah. still, it's a practice though. I mean, I'm same thing. As long as I've been meditating and as much as I know this, my mind can wander in a conversation. Oh, absolutely. You know? And, and it's not as rich of a conversation if I allow my mind to wander for too long. Usually I can catch it and I'm like, no, no, no. I want to be listening to this. I need, I want to tune in. And so it's, and, and that's really what meditation is all about. Yeah. is is you know if you have a mantra or your breath or whatever it's like your mind wanders you gently come back your mind is the same 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 as oh, a yeah. conversation like, and even when we're together you'll you know when my mind is wandering you're like um eddie we're recording <laughs> something here <laughs> stop picking your fingernails okay so <laughs> Do you think though when you're doing that that you weren't listening cuz i have a feeling you were still listening oh i was listening yeah that's what i was I listening oh yes yeah. but but is and was it active listening? Yeah, like well, as a participant in the conversation, and we're we're, we're talking about if if you haven't heard, I I think we didn't we've talked about this before, but it, when we were in Sicily and we tried doing like an audio because we didn't the video whatever, and uh, we we didn't end up publishing the episode, but Eddie wasn't used to like being in person when we were recording, and so <laughs> I she was talking, and then all of a sudden I started talking, and then she was like totally not looking into my eyes, or and then it seemed like she wasn't listening because she was like picking her fingers and her toes. Filing my just nails. Doing, yeah, and, and, and I was like, I was like, I was looking, I was, hey, hey, but kept trying to catch her, I paused the recording, I'm like, hey, can I, because, you know, it's kind of like, I guess she was used <laughs> to seeing me on camera looking at, you know, Looking straight so, at or not sitting in the room next to each other. And just, you know, it was like, because it's like when you're sitting with somebody having a conversation, a lot of times we're pouring a cup of tea or we're cooking right, or we're, right. we're actively doing something. Right. right. So, and here, you know, you and I were like looking at each other right now. Yeah. We're in yeah. our spaces. Nobody's interrupting. It's, and it's a lot easier, isn't it? To, to listen. And be, yeah. be really engaged and attentive and mindful yeah. and all that. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah. I think so. I think they, they say multitasking is a myth. And um, so I think deep, you know, and then there's, so what other deep listening is I liked we, before we came on today, you were giving the example of um, when you were younger and came to Nashville and um, before we learned how to do deep listening and, and the universe started flowing from music Oh, yes, because we were talking about one of our friends who we feel has been her flow in one direction is really happening. Doors are opening and, and you know, it's challenging. She's working really hard and she will be an amazing, she is an amazing success, mm -hmm. but will continue to expand on this gift. And then I went, I had a kind of an aha moment and I went, well, I kind of did that. I kind of, you know, left medicine and moved to Nashville and started on the you know, the music path and, you know, it, it was challenging back in the, well, it was the early nineties, right? That's when we first met. Mm -hmm. And then I started to dabble in holistic medicine and started working with a holistic uh, doctor and, and ended up working with him for years and almost 10 years. And that way of living was flowing really well. I loved what I was doing. Every book I picked up was about you know, health and nutrition and wellness and, and my music wasn't getting a ton of attention. And I'm, but I'm going, yeah, well, I came to Nashville to do music. I better write with some people and maybe I'll create more music. And it wasn't flowing really easy in that lane. So, you know, looking back at it now, I'm going, well, we want to go where the, the flow is happening, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the attention and where attention goes energy flows. And if there's ease, then hmm, shouldn't that be the lane? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think Sarah mentioned it on the chat we did with her. She said, sometimes we are talking about what we want to do, but we're not spending any time doing it. Exactly. When we were talking about like when you're, or someone else said about manifesting. Yeah. We talked about it with Sarah where the energy goes, where the thought and you're manifesting it, but 
if you're wanting to be a musician or you're wanting to be a successful singer, songwriter, artist, and you're not working at it, you're not going to a music lesson, you're not singing every day, you're not listening to music, <laughs> you know, um, what are you doing to get there mm -hmm. to draw that energy to it? Mm -hmm. Like it's, yeah. So listening to the flow of the universe is another way, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and listening to our intuition. You know, what is that, that it's like our, you know, we talked about it a little bit with Sarah, the inner guidance system, Sarah talked about it as where, where the, where your life wants to go, listening to where, what, what naturally wants to happen. And yeah. that, that is, you know, I ask people when they come on retreat with me, it's like, do you want what you want or do you want what you need? Mm -hmm. You know, do you want what you want and do you want what you need? And there are some, there are half the people that want what they want and half the people that want what they need. And it's perfectly fine. Wherever it is, is fine for you. I've always been a person. I want what I need. I don't mm -hmm. want what I want anymore because that always used to get me into trouble. <laughs> and yeah. so, so for many years now, it's like, okay, you know, universe, I'm ready. Whatever it is that I need is just, you know, so mm -hmm listening to that and discerning that the, you know, and so the way I do it, so say, and, and you can do it for small things or big things. I feel like when you learn to listen to intuition and the flow of your life with small things, it, that's easier because it, it, it's, it's the same energy as with bigger things. So for instance, for flights for me or, and trips, if I'm going to go to Canada in the summer, which I go every year, I'm like, okay, the summer's wide open. I don't have, I usually don't book any bliss days or anything in the summer because everybody's out of town anyway. So I can, I've got two months I can choose from when to go. When do I go? And so I'll start looking at tickets and I'll just feel into what, where is there a good flight, the routing that I want, the price that I want. And I'll watch over a couple of days and I'll just look for the flow. Mm -hmm. I'll look for the flow. If I've got a choice of a couple of things and I'm trying to figure out, I look for where the flow is going. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, that's that sounds like you're wholehearted. <laughs> I'm wholehearted. <laughs> I'm invested. I need to get to Canada. My heart's pulling me there. Yeah. 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 I think also there's you you have the thought. It's like when we were talking about even traveling or doing something together, we go, oh. That sounds good. It's almost like there's a feeling with it first mm -hmm. and then it grows from that. And then when we look at the tickets or, oh, there's a seat sale and, or mm -hmm. there's, you know, this connection is easy. And if we go to this and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, let's do that. And, you know, there, there's a flow to it. But when mm -hmm. it earlier, we were supposed to travel somewhere, um, Stratton and I back last month. And as we got looking at flights, we were like, oh, that's challenging. Um, hmm, it's not that flowing. one's not working. It wasn't mm -hmm. flowing. So we're like, well, we'll look at it again later. And mm -hmm. and that's kind of like what we do if we get stuck with a thought that isn't, it's not flowing. It's not going anywhere. It's like, well, then park it and look at it later. Mm -hmm. Don't start getting frustrated and like, just really that's deep listening, right? Yes. Yes. That's a great way to put it. Park it. And look at it later, because I know many people who try to, oh, they they get really, they're gr almost gripping on white knuckling, I want to yeah. go at this time. And so they try to force it. And typically, if you try to force it, like you can make it happen, but there's usually something that happens where you're like, you know what, it probably would have been better where, you know, this other time or whatever it was, or you have to end up changing the ticket because somebody's sick or whatever it is, you know, or there's a, a you know, yeah. flight gets canceled and, you know. I yeah. mean, you're still, and, 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 you know, going with the flow doesn't mean, and if you're listening to the flow and you've made some decisions, it doesn't mean that everything's always going to be easy and happy no. and joyful. That's right. That's right. Cause no, life, no. Yeah, yeah, life is, is life is, is dynamic, yeah. you know, and just like a, a, a flower that comes out in the spring is going to have all kinds of things to deal with, with weather, with animals, with soil, well, that's how we are too. I mean, we're made up of the same stuff as the plants are. We eat, our body turns into the food, our body turns our body after we eat the food, you know? And so yeah. we are in nature. And so what life is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So 
it, so because sometimes people will like follow a sign or an intuition and then they'll get mad because things don't turn out the way like they wanted to. And it's 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 really it's really coming into a a, a deep acceptance of what's happening in your life. It's like life mm-hmm. is always going to happen. There's always going to be difficulties. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be joys. There's going to be ease. There's going to be all of it. Mm-hmm. And the way we flow with the ease and flow with the challenges is I feel like what hopefully happens naturally as we get older certainly happens, you know, on the path that I've been on being more, trying to be more self-aware um, and and then maybe a little bit of both, you know, because. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. When you just said you, you're, you know, the inner and the outer world, right. They, they they match up and they really do. And I was listening to something the other day and the gal mentioned, you know, our, and I have, I've said some of these kind of, I love um, comparing things to how our, our bodies and our cells and respond to everything from toxins to what we eat to, I mean, we're, we're processing all the time stuff. Mm -hmm. So I love it when we see, like someone said, uh, say California, California. Okay. So, so California, there's blackouts and there's fires and there's fear. And, you know, they started listing all this stuff. And then, and if you compare that to the body, well, there's blackouts, there's anxiety, there's fear, there's fire, there's inflammation, right? It's, but, but it moves, it changes, it's forever shifting. It's in, in that present moment, that's what's happening. And then we we're dealing with it the best we can and we're moving through it. And, you know, there's, we get back into that flow then of our human existence of what we're doing and without thinking too far ahead and too far back, we're just, you know, just moving with it. Mm-hmm. So it's so cool when you compare the two that, mm-hmm. that, cause that's where we're, we're, we're all connected. We're so mm-hmm. interconnected. Mm-hmm. You know, I love the saying of the, if, when you pull at the earth, the earth pulls back at you, mm-hmm. you know, it's beautiful. If, yeah. Isn't it? Like it's, yeah. we're all connected. So it, it's respectful. It's so authentic when we're listening to somebody and, and we're really listening, you mm-hmm. know, and I know as I've gotten older, that's been a practice of mine because it wasn't my early conditioning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It but like, you did I, it, you did it beautiful. You've always done it beautifully as a doctor. Yes. Yes. Because it's, you know, it, it's, it was important. Mm-hmm. It's important. But when it's with our friendships, right, it doesn't have to just be in your work. You need to apply that to your mm-hmm. friendships, to your family, mm-hmm. to what's in front of you, what's in this moment, in that present moment. They, you actually have active, engaged can be empathic, can be authentic. It can be right. It's wholehearted. It's all of that deep, trusting, listening, deep Mm -hmm. listening. Yeah. So it's so, it's such a gift. Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm. It's a good topic. It's, I think it's something that we are constantly unfolding and getting better at, you know, just like present being more present in our lives. It's, it makes, it's like, it's where, it's where the joy is because the joy is in the present moment. The Mm -hmm. joy is in the connections. And so Mm -hmm. when we work on this and we talk about this and we, we are aware of where, when we are not listening whether it's to another person or to our own lives. And then we can, the great thing is about it, we can choose differently in the next moment. And even to ourselves, yes. listening to yourself, that mm-hmm. deep active listening, which mm-hmm. is the meditation. That is, it, it is a meditation. And, yes. and uh, yeah, and I've and gotten better at it with meditation. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, deep listening to your own life, to your own flow. Yes, to your own body. Like your mm-hmm. body is going to tell you if it's not optimal. It'll mm-hmm. tell you. And if you're listening, then a symptom is something yelling at you, right? So if it's pain, it's yelling. If it's 
you know, rash, it's yelling. And if you're okay with that, then you're okay, then okay, you'll live with that. But are you listening? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, we have optimal health when we check all the boxes of what we figure optimal health is, because mm -hmm. it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, so I'd listen every day. What, what do I want to have in the morning? And it changes. Absolutely. You know, sometimes my body doesn't want anything and it, or sometimes I want herba mate. Sometimes I want black tea, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And that's, there is no rule. Sometimes we get into a habit of thinking we want something and then we do without it for a little bit. And then we go, you know, I don't really, I'm, I'm not in the mood for that. What am I in the mood for? Hmm. And your body will tell you, especially if it's in optimal health or it's really you're in your flow, right? You're mm -hmm. feeling good, right? Yeah. Which is another, we've had lots of topics around that, but um, yeah. Yeah. When you're, when you're not listening to your body and you're, and you're eating crap and then it's like a cycle. Cause then you're not, you, you, you eat crap and the, and the GPS kind of gets a, a little bit of dissonance in it and you're not able to listen so well mm -hmm. yes. it gets clogged. Yes. Yeah. And as we get older, we start going, okay, I got to listen more now because my body's really screaming at me mm -hmm. and I have to do, I have to change this. I, mm -hmm. if I want to sleep better, or if I want to, you know, walk that hill without being out of breath, or if I want to get my blood pressure down, or if I want to get my lab work improved or mm -hmm. right, you know, my waist circumference you know, lesser. So that's the, that's deep listening to. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good conversation. Yeah. I like that. Like that topic. Mm. Yeah. Thanks. thanks. Thanks for yeah. that. You're hey. welcome. You have some good ideas. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, everyone. See you next time, Ed. Love you. Love you. And thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>